Hey, what's up? This is Sax, and you're watching Wing Sound Live from AES 2011. Even though producing and mixing in the box has gotten extremely powerful over the years, the implementation of hardware can amplify the essence of any setup. Let's check out what some of the world's largest hardware manufacturers are showcasing at this year's AES. How's it going guys? My name is Raul. I'm here with Focusrite Innovation at AES 2011 and I'm happy to be here with Wing Sound. We're here showcasing a bunch of new products. Focusrite is synonymous with sound quality. We're all about microphone preamps and great quality products. The newest one is called the Scarlet 2i2. How's it going everyone? I'm Brandon. We think the 2i2 is going to be very popular. We have two microphone preamps. Each of them have a line and an instrument switch. Next to these preamps are your gain knobs. The cool thing about these gain knobs is that there's an LED clip indicator ring around these gain knobs. There's also phantom power. You have your direct monitor knob. You have a headphone output gain stage right here. And then you also have a direct monitor switch for low latency recording. On the back, it's very simple. Two outputs, USB, Kensington lock. Focusrite is the recording and interface side of the company, and the Novation side is the music production and creation side. We're showcasing the Ultranova synthesizer, our premium SL Mark II MIDI controller range if you're looking for that extra control. The new Impulse MIDI controller featuring multifunction backlit drum pads. A couple things I want to point out on the Impulse 49. First thing that you might notice is that these drum pads, they're LED backlit, and these are pressure sensitive drum pads. You have nice visual feedback of what's, what you're doing, what's going on. When you turn this arpeggiator on, you can see how the pads change colors into a green LED. When I hit these keys, you can see this yellow pad traveling across the eight step sequencer of the arpeggiator. And the really cool thing is, is we can hit some of these pads and you can see how they turn red. And the next time you play the arpeggiator, it's gonna skip those pads. So you're kind of customizing your pattern. You have your roll. This is a very similar feature that you would find in MPCs. When you hit both of these together, you can see I have a yellow pad right here. And why that's yellow is because I put this into clip launch mode. We're running Ableton Live on this computer and I've just turned these pads up here into a mini launch pad. I'm Ivana Manley from Manley Labs. We have a Manley Variable Mu that's a stereo tube limiter. You'll find that in a lot of leading mastering studios around the world. One might say about 80% of rock music goes through one of those somewhere in the chain. Vacuum tube equipment built right here in America. That's my gig. I love seeing everybody here at AES 2011. How you doing? I'm Mike. I'm from Dangerous Music. Here we have our rack with our mastering setup. People started running into problems with digital summing within a digital audio workstation. So we invented the 2-Bus as a way to bring back analog summing. Same idea as you used to have in an analog console, like an old SSL or an Eve. You would take 16 channels coming in and sum them down to two. Well, this is the same kind of idea, but for the modern DAW world, where you're taking 16 tracks out of your DAW, you're summing them down to two, and then taking them back into your DAW to record your mix. Join the conversation by following Wink Sound on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube to keep up with everything you need to know about music and audio technology. Thank <laughs> you.